please go ahead right sir uh, so welcome everyone this is a very auspicious occasion when we are having not just one but four book launches here and um, it is indeed a, a very happy occasion for our, all of us book lovers uh, because uh, we are uh, going to hear many erudite persons speaking here on uh, these four uh, books uh, which are being launched today i welcome everyone to this august session thank you so much everyone for taking your time out and uh, listening and joining in and also sharing your views uh, a book as we all know is made from a tree Uh, it is an assemblage of flat flexible parts which is still called leaves partly because it's made from a tree and it's imprinted with dark pigmented squiggles so one glance at a book and you hear the voice of another person perhaps someone dead for thousands of years or it could be someone alive who is your friend speaking to you as we are doing on this occasion we are all here to listen to four books of dr jernel singh anand being launched here so across the millennia this author will be speaking we hope to millions of other people clearly and silently inside their heads and he will be speaking directly to his readers writing is perhaps one of the greatest of human inventions binding together people citizens of distant epochs of times of places who never knew one another otherwise books break the shackles of time proof that humans can work magic so i cordially welcome everyone to this wonderful session and this session is going to begin with a beautiful presentation by a very young and talented person uh, ms hargun grover who is a student of class 4 in st anne's convent school at chandigarh and she is going to present her views her presentation specially made on the eve of independence day and which is the very very happy occasion for this book launch uh, so we all let us all welcome this young and talented performer ms hargun grover now between a teacher and a student हमने सुना था एक है भारत सब मुल्कों से नेक है भारत लेकिन जब नजदीक से देखा सोच समझ कर ठीक से देखा हमने नक्शे और ही पाए बदले हुए सब तौड़ी भाई एक से एक की बात जुदा है धर्म जुदा है जात जुदा आपने जो कुछ हमको बढ़ाया वो तो कहीं भी नजर न आया जो कुछ मैंने तुमको पढ़ाया उसमें कुछ भी झूठ नहीं भाषा से भाषा ना मिले तो इसका मतलब फूट नहीं एक डाल पर रह कर से फूल जुदा है साथ जुदा ए बुरा नहीं पड़ियो हे वतन में धर्म जुदा है जात जुदा अपने वतन में वही है जब कुरान का कहना वो है वेद कुरान का कहना फिर ये शोर शराबा क्यों है इतना खून खराबा क्यों है अपने वतन में सदियों तक इस देश के बच्चों रही हकूमत वैरो की अभी तलक हम सब के मुँह पर धूल है उनके पैरों की लड़वाओ और राज करो ये उन लोगों की हिकमत थी उन लोगों की जाल में आना हम लोगों की जिल्लत थी अपने वतन में धन्यवाद that was very nice that was very nice thank you hargun for uh bringing a live independence day for us which is going to approach tomorrow which is approaching us tomorrow in fact uh and uh, we are all uh, eagerly awaiting the 75th anniversary of the independence day thank you so much again and uh, now uh, moving on to the next segment of our uh, program i shall speak a few words about dr jernel singh anand uh, before we invite Uh, him to hear his views on the various books uh, that he has been writing and uh, addressing us uh, dr janel singh anand has been described as a contemporary polymath of literature by uh, a very known critic he has uh, been compared sometimes to jonathan swift 
and sometimes to Daniel Defoe uh, for his pungent satire and social analysis. Uh, the he, only author in the world to have written, in fact, nine epic poems, uh, Dr. Anand's works have created a stir in the international literary circles. He's an icon of world culture and literature, honored globally, and his analysis and erudition have brought him many prestigious awards all over the world. Dr. Anand has a wide range of writings behind him with 50 years of fruitful literary work, beginning from his adolescence when he was 13 years of age. Uh, indeed, an inspiration. He has uh, written 140 books on poetry, fiction, nonfiction, philosophy, spirituality, environment, and political and critical theory. His latest work, the Mahakal Trilogy with Lusters, the Dominion of the Neither World, and the Ultronic Age being its three parts, they tied over times past, present, and future, and we'll be hearing about them today from our learned speakers. Um, Dr. Maya Herman Sekulich has described him as one of the greatest poets among philosophers and one of the greatest philosophers among poets. Dr. Janel Singh Anand was born in the village of Alamgir, uh, which was situated very close to Ludhiana, which is situated very close to Ludhiana in Punjab. And it is a historical village, which is related to the visit of the 10th Guru of the Sikhs, Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji. His ancestral village is Longowal, uh, also in the Punjab, India, which is also famous for Sant Harchan Singh Longowal Ji, a great spiritual leader of the Sikhs. Uh, his early education was in his village school at Longowal, and his early days were marked by great poverty. And we see how this great son of India and this great world writer has slowly risen from the depths of poverty into this great learned writer. Uh, he did his MA in English from Punjab University, Chandigarh. And in 1979, he got his first place of posting as a lecturer in English at GGN Khalsa College, Ludhiana. Uh, later, in, uh, he shifted to Punjab University. And then in 1981, he started working again as, at a permanent job at Guru Nanak College, Kiliawali, where he was to spend the most productive period of his life. And it was here that he published his first book, The Confessions of a Corpse then The Monster Within, followed by his other poetry collection entitled Spare Me, O Lucifer, and several other books. In 2000, he achieved his doctorate, and in 2004, he was promoted to be the principal of DAV College Patinda, which is uh, he remained for 10 years and retired in 2015. Here, he published his major works, Beyond Life, Beyond Death, Bliss, The Other Passion, and several other books. He later on uh, went on to work at other colleges and retired from active service finally in 2020 on attaining the age of 65. Uh, numerous critics have spoken on, read, and analyzed his works. Being a prolific poet, we will listen to some of the critics' views on his excellent writings. Uh, being a prolific poet, Dr. Anand cherishes numerous critical points, both on his poetry and his epic works, since the main focus of this program today is his poetry, especially, and also his interviews. The scope is limited to his, uh, mainly his writings as a poet. B.J. Singh, who is a noted critic and connoisseur from Punjab, he acknowledges uh, Dr. Anand's uh, uh, great contribution to poetry, fiction, nonfiction, and critical theory. For Dr. Swaraj Raj, Anand's postmodernism is mixed with a moral tone in a gesture of rejecting postmodern relativism and in favor of a desire, quote, for a world that is not devoid of some life affirming values, unquote. Rahim Karim detects deep philosophy in Anand's poetry. The philosophical images, he says, the philosophical images and feelings in Anand's poetry saturated with the spirit of the present and deeply in touch with roots of the oldest and richest Indian culture make a person seriously think about the realities of life, unquote. 
for Sri Jairam Chesti Shadri, another very learned critic, Anand is more of a mystic, more of a humanist, more inclusive, more embracing of all that's good, more profound in thought, more warm in the heart than most. He takes the Indian poet as, quote, an influencer mighty, a poet that molds life for the better, unquote. Another Anand critic is uh, Sri T.S. Anand, whose critique of Burning Bright highlights the spiritual dimension of the poet's quest. He says, Dr. Anand's poetry carries an indelible impress of spirituality, unquote. Muhammad Shanazar pinpoints Dr. Anand's ability to infuse poetry with high intellectualism while maintaining the sensuousness of the language, unquote. So here we uh, anticipate the words, the address of Dr. Jarnel Singh Anand, who will himself speak on his views about his writing, about his poetry. Before we go on, we proceed to the book launch. I cordially invite Dr. Jarnel Singh Anand, sir, please enlighten us with your views. Uh, Dr. Anand, sir, please unmute yourself. So now I think I am audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please continue. Thank sir. you. Thank you, Professor Mandakini Bhattacharya, for your very, very kind words and also for accepting this very texting assignment to host the celebration of poetry today. It was a pleasure, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I welcome and express my deep gratitude to all the literary elite of the world who are assembled here at the world premiere of my books. All of you are present today, deserve my thanks for sparing time for the celebration of poetry. I wish to just give a preview of these books uh, so that when scholars talk about them, we know the context. Uh, today we are uh, releasing Dominion of the Netherworld. This book is a sequel to Lustus. Lustus, I think most of the people know about this book. And uh, this is the book second of Mahakal Trilogy that Professor Mandakini also referred to, the Mahakal Trilogy. There are three books in this uh, trilogy. First is Lustus. The second Dominion of the Netherworld is being released today. And its third uh, book is The Ultronic Age, The Celestial Reign. That book is under print. So today we will be focusing with all the reviews to se the second work, Dominion. Then another book is Point Counterpoint. This is a philosophical odyssey which projects my views on various literary issues raised by great world scholars. Actually, I have already written some post 21st century critical views in four volumes in which I have interviewed around 150 world scholars. So this book actually deals with my views on literary issues. Around 10 or 12 people, they have put me a questionnaire and it was very thrilling and exciting to answer these questions. And the specific thing about this book is that uh, I have dedicated this book to uh, Grezia de Leda, the only woman Nobel laureate from Italy. And for this, our friend from Italy, Maria Teresa, she is on the uh, celebration body of Italy and she helped me in this project. The third book that you will see today, and uh, <clears throat> you will see some discussion on this book also, that is that it is written by Dr. Rohaya Farsi. Those who are connected with me closely, they know the role of uh, Dr. Rohaya Farsi. She is a assistant professor in the University of Nishabur, Iran. She has been my literary biographer for a decade. And she has written 
12 to 15 articles on various of my books. And she was recently appointed chief coordinator of a research project by the university. And this project was a comparative study of the poetry of J.S. Anand, Sohrab Saperi, and Faru Farukhsa. These are Iranian scholars. You will learn about them just now. So the other word, is, uh, next book is Cosmic Poetry, Volume 2. Uh, this book uh, is edited by our very close friend, associate Dr. Sandhya Rao K., Dr. Paneet Jaggi, Dr. Manvinder Singh, Anand, and Dr. Kiran Preet. And it has more than 50 poets whose poetry has been profiled. I congratulate all the poets. The next volume three is coming up, and it is being edited by Dr. Roha Farsi from Iran. Uh, I'm thankful to Dr. Shiv Sethi for reviewing my works in various newspapers. And I need to specially thank and welcome Dr. Dipakta Madhvi. She is here. She is chairperson of IHRO. IHRO means International Human Rights Observatory, which has its uh, branches in almost 15 countries with its headquarters in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, Dr. Jibakta Madhvi has uh, written the foreword of uh, Neither World and edited also. So uh, another book that is coming up is Earthlings. This is a book on uh, eco-criticism edited by Dr. Sumedha Pandari and its foreword has been penned by Dr. Savraj Raj. It is also under print, or I can say under labor pains. So dear friends and poets at arms, you have heard the word night at arms. So I call all poets because they carry swords, we carry words. So we are also poets at arms. I thank you once again for giving me your precious time. I may mention here the names of some stalwarts of the spiritual and literary world uh, some of my friends are here today uh, who have always blessed me. Some senior academicians like Dr. Basudev, Dr. K. B. Razdan, Dalit Ji. I am thankful to all of you who are here today and those who could not make it today here. But they have always uh, uh, been uh, in contact with me, reading my poetry, appreciating it, discussing things with me. Uh, the ambassador, Dr. Samuel Kavero from Peru, Dr. Nizar Sartavi from Jordan, uh, Dr. Bajram Redsepik from Australia, ambassador, Dr. Vignu Roth, he is from Poland, and uh, Dr. Ambassador Lejapko Mihajlovski from Macedonia, Dr. Stish K. Kapoor, he is an Indian spiritualist, Dr. Dalvinder Singh Garewal, and Eva Petropoulos from Greece. And I would like to specifically mention Dr. George Onsu, who is trying hard to make himself heard by his own government. I wish the political establishment listens to what the poets say, but our experience shows the world does not bother what poets think. That is the reason no poet will ever be found in the cabinet of any country, nor on UN bonds. Are they just voices in the wilderness? Papers to consider our ideas to stim me, and they are pleased to ignore what we have to say. The question is, why a poet writes? The simple answer is, it gives him joy. It restores his balance and connects him to creative forces of the universe. Friends, there is a concept, the economic concept, that so, so many people are living below the poverty line. We see how many of us, the rich, the well endowed, are living below the dignity line. 
i wish you to give thought to this word living below the dignity line what is dignity everybody has his own definition for this word but i think if you are doing the job for which you are detailed you are living a dignified life animal word whatever they eat they justify it so you will see even if you look at a dog you will never find it miserable the birds they are having the waters they are doing their job and they are living with dignity but this dignity is eluding them because for what we have been detailed we are not performing that to the whatever uh, to great extent most of the people are you know bungling in the duties they are assigned they are paid for them but they don't do their job and if they are doing their job they are not doing it well that is why i feel that human race is devoid of it. that has to be thought of now we go to another idea how many people have fallen below the divinity line that is also very important there are so many people who are living below the poverty line and those who are living above the poverty line they are all below the divinity line we have to look into these ideas if we want things to change for the better and the poet is concerned with the spiritually elevating aspects of human life no doubt we need to criticize the world but this criticism has to be constructive not destructive i call upon all of you to look at life with a renewed cosmic vision we generally say he is a um, he is a great humanist we like this word humanism but humanism means we are good to human beings but in this universe which sustains us it is not only humans there are so many other things also which need our attention so what i feel is that uh, we have you should have a renewed cosmic vision a sense of commitment to the entire creation we cannot ignore birds animals and we cannot ignore the vegetation the trees the waters we cannot ignore them and just think of human beings we, uh, we cannot afford to do that uh encourage love for life even beyond human horizon we need to move beyond human horizon also uh, and see how our resources can be best utilized we are endowed by the by gods enough that we can convert it we can manufacture peace and contentment we should have to see how it can be done this these are the cardinal necessities for the well being of the universe and uh, before i finish off i will take two minutes more uh, i feel that uh, poets are saying so many things they are writing poetry on peace on ukraine and all that but i also feel that nobody is taking us seriously at least the world does not take us seriously so there is a poem who listens to us poets it is for all of us to just think over it o oh, minstrel singer o oh, minstrel who charged thee to sing verses for humanity you are like a singing bird a top an electric pole bursting in cries who knows why so many crows so many birds so many rivers and winds that sweep across hemispheres sing their hearts out most of them in praise of the lord you complain these kings you complain these kings and their men listen thee not this is the i mean complaint of the poet that he wants to say something but the kings don't listen o oh, oracle burst not your lungs 
trying to shout out to pour thy notes into clogged ears. Who listened to great versifiers? Few were regarded, most tolerated, or summarily ignored. Pain is the lot of the poor. and you gain thy balance by blurting it out i was just mentioning why we write poetry you sing for yourself you sing for yourself your song is your problem not the world's you sing because you cannot help you sing for yourself your song is your problem not the world's they ignore you the world ignores you as we all move on leaving crows and nightingales with their news when we are moving on the roads crows are crowing nightingales are singing we leave them to their job and go on to the job that is how people look at our poetry and poets no he takes it seriously so friends once again i am thankful to all of you for being here and uh, making it a happy and a very meaningful event once again thank you so much thank you so much uh, the poets grouse that neither emperors nor the common people probably listen to him has been echoed here by dr jarnel singh anand with a lot of heartache and it is true looking at the world around us at the things that are happening every day the famous and the not so famous being hurt and uh, we see the 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 anguished cry of the poet of the writer who is crying out in pain at not being heard for his tunes of warning for his uh, words of warning uh, and at the same time the poet has not lost his uh, hope in humanity uh, dr anand gives this message of universal love which is a very practical message nothing philosophical but extremely practical that we must love each other in order to survive thank you so much dr anand for those wonderful wonderful uh, visions uh, many uh, of our erudite scholars have joined today later on in the evening i welcome all of you perhaps it is not possible to mention each one but thank you so much each of you for being present here and for listening and for being a part of this ceremony thank you once again so i will now go on to the next segment of the program which is uh, giving an introduction of the four books that are being launched here today uh, but before that i would like to say open a book open a book and you will find people and places of every kind open a book and you can be anything you want to be open a book and you can share wondrous words you find in there open a book open a book and i will do you read to me and i'll read to you so that is the wonderful wonderful world of our scholars and writers we read each other we listen to each other we share our views and that is exactly what we are here for today on this wonderful evening of exchange of views so among the first uh, the first book that i would like to discuss here that is being launched today is a research project of the department of english university of nishapur iran it is a comparative study of the poetry of dr j sanan sorab seperi and foro faraksad who are iranian poets and its chief coordinator and author is dr ruhaya farsi uh, what is this book this research project all about you can see dr ruhaya farsi there on the screen history testifies to the flow of cultural currents as dr farsi says between indian and iranian civilizations in ancient times the many intercultural exchanges which used to occur between india and iran are reflected in the literary products of both nations especially those which belong to india's quote unquote muslim period the earliest genre of hindi literature called prem akhyans is reported to have been composed originally in the persian script by sufis who narrated 
the seeker's mystical quest for union with God. With the advent of European colonial powers from the end of the 15th century, however, the cross-cultural ties between the two nations became gradually weak. Yet, there are some Indian states whose people's local language is Persian. Many Indians enjoy reading the poems of Hafiz, Saadi, and Molvi. And one can even refer to the great poet Rabindranath Tagore, the Nobel Prize winner, whose mystical perspective and love poems are heavily reliant upon Hafiz's mysticism. The main concern of this comparative study that is being launched today is locating points of similarity between Dr. Anand as a living Indian poet and the poems by Iranian poets that I have just mentioned. They, can, they are believed to have socio-cultural roots and points of similarities and can provide us opportunities to locate the common points between these two cultures. Dr. Anand, as Dr. Ruhaya Farsi has discovered in her almost 10 years of association and research uh, into, the, into the, um, the work of Dr. Anand. Dr. Anand addresses different topics ranging from the most corporeal one to the most spiritual notions. The versatility of his topical concerns, Dr. Farsi has discovered, like love, the earth, pollution, corruption, woman, the soul, the body, the mind, etc., makes one. Shall we? Uh, Interrupted momentarily. Am I audible now? Am I audible now? I hope I'm audible and visible. So topically, the grounds of comparison are humorous. Dr. Anand, sir? I am audible and now, I hope? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Fine, thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, Dr. Anand, uh, in one part of this book, uh, what is being done is comparing and uh, detecting the mysticism in Anand's and Seperi's poetry. The other part addresses the wasteland vision that displays similarities between Dr. Anand's and Farooq Saad's poetry. And this study also comprises of two other chapters in one of which attends to the notions of the self as presented and enacted in the poetry of the three poets. And the other chapter which focuses on the poet's meta poetry, that is the poetry in which the poet deals with his or her experiences of composing poetry. So a glance over Seperi's Farukza, Seperi and Farukzad's poetry, uh, Dr. Farsi has discovered, shows a stark contrast between them. While Seperi's poetry are mainly ex expressive of a sort of mysticism, Farukzad's poetic vision reads uh, pessimistically and casts life in a gloomy mood. Such points of contradiction emanate from their two contrastive stances. Um, his uh, Seperi's mysticism, therefore, is of a special type, which responds back to the secular impulses of his modernized time. Farooq Saad, on the other hand, approaches her world around from within and speaks as a human being involved and entangled in demanding life conditions as a human being. Dr. Anand's poetry is inclusive. Dr. Farsi has discovered it is inclusive of both pessimistic and optimistic attitudes and displays both the mysticism shown by Seperi and the wasteland visions of Farooq Saad. His poems have both mystical dimensions and are at the same time expressive of a matter of fact perspective. This wide scope of vision renders his world in different ways, 
makes his poetry suitable for comparison with the poets on different scales. So uh, this is what I would like to speak today of this uh, remarkable, uh, just a second, please. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is the second book uh, we are going to release today, The Dominion of the Neither World. Uh, yes, sir. I would like to speak briefly about the Cosmic Poetry uh, Volume 2, sir, before I go on to the Dominion. If you are carrying a copy, sir. Yeah, here is Cosmic Poetry. Right, sir. And this is a wonderful collection of poetry, Cosmic Poetry Volume 2, which is edited by Dr. Sandhya Raoke, as uh, Dr. Uh, Anand also mentioned, from Vijayawada. Dr. Sandhya Raoke is from Vijayawada. And uh, the co-editors are Dr. Manminder Singh Anand, Professor Kiran Preet Grover, the managing editor is Dr. Parneet Jaggi, and chief editor and patron is Dr. Jarnail Singh Anand. This anthology justifies its objective, its title of Cosmic Poetry 2, and the title to the core as its sequential sibling volume one. So the book is being launched here today, and uh, the lofty Vedantic thought from the Upanishad Vasudeva Kutumbakam uh, indicating that the whole world, universe, and reality is one and the same. This reinforces the transcendental belief that there is an underlying oneness in the apparently disparate worlds of existence and thought. So the trite phrase, the phrase, the global village, reflects well in this literary mirror of cosmic poetry, volume two. Poets who are published here hail from across the world, Poland, Croatia, Mexico, UK, Romania, Albania, US, Greece, Israel, Peru, Canada, Ghana, Macedonia, Russia, Australia. So you can see what a brilliant collection this is of poets from all corners of the world. Uh, Yugoslavia, Serbia, Kosovo, besides, of course, from all across India. Some poets rendered translations of poems popular in their uh, native uh, tongue into English as well. So the book begins with the poem Cosmic Love aptly and on a cheerful note and the remaining poems contemplate on philosophical angles of life, magic of words, dreams, uh, realized and lost, harmony in nature, meanings from silence, segregation, the need of peace, geometry of a point, faith in hope amidst darkness, introspection, seeking answers for queries, uh, etc., and a quick flipping of these themes, which are delved into at will by the various poets, because there was no uh, particular diktat as such, only the theme had to correspond to cosmic uh, nature of the world, of our interconnectivity. So a quick delving into these themes will, uh, I'm sure, uh, prove to be a very exciting and absorbing read for all of us. And uh, now we come to the second part of the Mahakal trilogy, book two, uh, which is a sequel to Lustus, the Prince of Darkness. And here we have it, uh, the Dominion of, uh, dominion of the Neither World. Uh, Dr. Janel Singh is holding it up and we are having its book launch today. It is a mega epic by Dr. Anand. And the foreword has been edited and also a part of it, a section has been written by Dr. Jupaka Madhavi. Uh, the epic saga of the dominion of the netherworld is a fictitious neo-mythological thriller that weaves into itself the essence of existential spirituality. The epic, uh, the central theme of the book is to make the world a better place. Again, a theme, a theme on which Dr. Anand stresses again and again with true partnerships. Now, these partnerships could be in the institution of marriage or in a political system. <clears throat> I'm sorry, again, uh, there are network issues because I'm, being, I'm in a area with a extremely low pressure and heavy rains. Hmm. Please go over to the next book. Counterpoint. Uh, 
So hello, Mandakini. I think uh, there is some yes, issues. I'm here. I'm here, sir. Okay. Uh, please go over to the uh, next book. Yes, sir. I'm there. Uh, point counterpoint, which is dedicated to Grazia Deleta. I hope I'm audible now. The first woman Nobel laureate of Italy. And in this book, uh, Dr. Anand has been interviewed by eminent world scholars and philosophers on literature, philosophy, spirituality, and creativity. Uh, it addresses several questions. The classic myths, both Eastern and Western, play an important role in Dr. Anand's poetry. Why is that? Sir, I'm audible, Dr. Anand. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes. So Dr. Anand very lucidly and very lyrically explains that the myths are a benchmark against which we measure human conduct and they make it easier to understand the phenomenon. So he's, again, in, in, in a, by another interviewer, he's asked in a time of global media terrorism, which works for the interests of some global political and pharmacological elites when humanity is reduced to an impersonal herd of animals because of COVID restrictions? Uh, how, what are his views on this global media terrorism? And Dr. Anand seconds this. Yes, uh, he agrees that the forced use of masks, curfews, etc., which severely checked human interaction and raised questions about human freedom and this exercise brought millions to the people who were successful with the help of media in causing a feeling of the apocalypse. So Dr. Uh, Anand says that he tends to agree it is global media terrorism which has been a threat to world peace. Uh, the world has to be wiser, he says, after the COVID outbreak. And again, when he's asked uh, that what the most, uh, the most important question, of course, about what, why do you write? Dr. Anand says that the, the answer lies in an alternative question. Why does water uh, overflows from a pitcher? Because we try to keep the life subdued and force it to pass like normal. So another, he says, is the issue of balance. People act, speak, fight, rest, or sleep in order to restore the disturbed balance of the body as well as human mind. Some people talk loudly to themselves. They release excess energy in this way. And Dr. Anand says it is in this very grand tradition of expressing, of, of letting out your inner feelings and emotions and outlet that people write so that their own emotional balance is retained. These and many other questions are asked to him by the several learned scholars in this collection. And I'm sure you will all enjoy reading this extremely, extremely valid and uh, timely collection of books uh, which are being launched today. So uh, I hope all of you, if you have a copy, kindly hold it up. Uh, if you have a copy in your possession so that we can sort of announce the book launch of all these copies. Um, Yes, point counterpoint, dominion of the neither world, and cosmic poetry volume two. Yes, sir. And we have uh, the excellent comparative study by Dr. Ruhaya Farsi. So, a uh, grand uh, congratulations are due to Dr. Anand for excellent release. And, uh, sir, with your permission, can we now go on to the next uh, segment? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Right, we are waiting for it. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. So we go on now to our welcoming our chief guest, Dr. Uh, professor Basudev Chakrabarti, who is a former professor of English, faculty dean of the University of Kalyani in West Bengal. Uh, he uh, did his PhD, uh, his master's program in English from the University of Houston, Texas, and uh, in USA, followed by his PhD degree as former World Humanist Scholar at Central University of Arkansas at Conway, USA. In 2003, Professor Chakrabarti conducted a workshop for English department uh, faculty on the poetry of Tagore, lectured to writing and rhetoric classes in the same university, and he has published eight books on various literary subjects, including his thesis of ha on Hardy, and also 
some problems of translation, for example, in Tagore's study, Indian partition fiction in English and in English translation, uh, critical essays on Ark in Orion, gender perspectives on South Asian writings in English, etc., cetera, et cetera. So I welcome this very, very talented and erudite scholar, uh, Professor Basudev Chakravarti, our chief guest today, to address the audience and uh, enlighten us with his views. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mondaki Nivartikarya. Uh, because of this introduction. So let me begin. Erudite scholars present on this occasion, Dr. J.S. Anand, creative writers, and the learned audience present. This is my proud privilege to be present on this occasion. At the very beginning, I intend to express my inexplicable joy and pride for the invaluable recognition bestowed upon Dr. J.S. An, not only by the erudite Indian academia, but also by the millennium Iranian scholarship and the present university, a center of excellence in Iran. Dr. Anand is a living, legendary connoisseur of art and literature who enlivened the relationship with Iran. Dr. Anand wrote in furthering the century old Indo Iranian relationship is a milestone of our cultural of our cultural bonding with Iran. I have come to know that some of the major works of Dr. J. S. An would be translated into Farsi language by Dr. Farsi, an esteemed professor of repute and a practicing translator. It is our great pleasure to think of this epoch-making event between India and Iran. I congratulate heartily to Dr. J.S. Anand on this occasion. Let me repeat what I have commented earlier on the great achievement of J.S. J.S. Anand. Recently, Dr. Anand has published a trilogy on the Mohakal based on Indian mythology, which is divided into four sequels of time eternal. The Shatyajo, literary meaning and era of truth, is an Shatyajo, which in parentheses, literary meaning and era of truth, and for bracket close, is an era of millennium followed by gradual decay of man's innermost and outermost realities of the world. The first book, Last Us, the first book, Last Us, shows the piercing battle between the virtue and the vice. And the battle ends with an agreement based upon the principle of adjustment and coexistence between the good and the bad. The first book of Mahakal Trilogy, Last Us, showed the inclusive, inconclusive war, I do repeat, inconclusive war between the forces of action 
in accord with spiritual laws and the forces of moral depravity. Robot-like life, inhuman cruelty, overall dishonesty, etc. The second book, Nether World, which has been released today. It is the second book of the trilogy, and this book is a vivid, and I use the technical term, naturalistic description. I use the term naturalism, naturalistic description of the world of decay and degeneration, which is popularly known as Collegium. And this Collegium is presided over by the king of darkness. I mean, naturalism is a kind of technique which is very often employed by creative writers to appear to be impartial, neutral. But I don't think that it is possible for anyone to, to make a watertight compartment between the objectivity and subjectivity. I refer to Emil Zola's Nana. I refer to Harley Granville Barker. I refer to John Goldsworthy. So he applied, Dr. John Anand has applied naturalistic techniques. He is in favor of promoting the principle of cosmic, cosmic ideas. In his speech today, he has brilliantly explained the nature of the universe. Cosmic world includes not only human beings, but also birds, animals, and vegetation. Zivas, the meadow, grove, and stream dark than every common side. All are included in Dr. Anand's cosmic ideas, cosmic belief. Uh, it is Koliju. This Koliju has been is presided over by the king of darkness. Anand, really, please read the signs. Anand and Visha very badly and funny. The dark epoch in which we are not. Except power, oil, passion, and lust. And the role of the divine sanctuary has gone, defined, reduced as they are to mere time. The second book of the Mohakal Trilogy is followed by Altronic Age, the Celestial Reign. Altronic Age is a very is a very common word nowadays because of the uh, growth and the development of uh, technology, information technology. Altronic Age, this particular word, Altrez, Altronic Age is relatively uncommon. Rel I use the term relatively. And colon, celestial reign. The last book of the trilogy brightens the glorious homecoming of mankind return to the idea, to the era of millennium. It establishes the completeness of the cycle. The prologue to, the, to this final book ends with a note of prologue, not the epilogue. Prologue ends with the, with a note of optimism. Earlier, while I wrote an article on last us, I said it was postmodernist, it was uh, open-ended, all these things. But after reading the last book, I arrived at the conclusion, I revised my opinion 
this trilogy of the mahakala the mahakala trilogy is a modernist in nature he is a dakranand is a modernist poet because it because because the last book of this trilogy is appear in not appears to be in very close end there is a beginning middle and the end the traditional criticism so i find this close ended at the end which i did not find in the in last class so last at uh, the time most time okay uh celestial race if if the time is over please remind me i will stop the last book of the trilogy is also an evidence of the focus of critic as an example let me refer to five lines from the last book where the queen altronia says i'm not going to make any comment on this name altronia <laughs> but it is very interesting definitely altronia said we are going to introduce a new model of government Government, good government, which aims at perfect decentralization of human resources and human welfare at the grassroots. Look at the line. It is relevant to the contemporary time. Indeed. the past the present and the future are interwoven yeah. the end of the last book which brings the future close to the present and the past is a visionary gleam and the past is a visionary gleam is the visionary gleam of dr anand dr anand partagedness is also revealed in the lines quoted for the area cosmic anthem look at the end of the uh, end of this third book of the trilogy see the cosmic anthem if, if a careful reading of the anthem reveals or creates a sense of optimism in my mind it was not that 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 enjoyment of celestial pleasures the creation of a happy mood in my mind was spontaneous it was not deliberate it was spontaneous i caught only four of five lines indeed the past the present and the future are inter already i have said it the end of this last book which brings the future close to the present and the past close to the present and the past is the visionary gleam of the prananth past cycle cosmic anthem at the end of the book leads the readers to see the future here is modernism the light no dark of the sunlight sublime no dark of the sunlight sublime no dark of the wind clear night you give for rest to bones think of the metaphor the i mean principle of similarity based on two different things now it's not similar it's a metaphor nights you give for rest condensed metaphor nights you give for rest to bones and no dark to flag off a tired time so the poem is an experience of dr anand's spiritual 
relocation, I let me use this word with all of your time's permission, a relocation from the real to the unreal, from the mundane to the spiritual. We must, we, we will not make any confusion about the difference between spirituality and religious. That's different, absolutely different. And he talks about spirit birth, which is very vital, which the world at the present time is badly in need of. On many occasions, Dr. Anand appears to be Shelley's Prometheus Unbound. I use, I refer to this text which is based upon Greek mythology. Prometheus, not Prometheus bound. Prometheus unbound. I'm not going into details why I have made the comparison with Dr. Anand's trilogy with Shelley, Prometheus unbound. This is not my uh, area of concentration on this occasion. The poem is an unbridled journey of Anand, innermost realities from the mundane to the spiritual. So one more sentence I use. I thank uh, Dr. Mondakini Bhattacharya of Damanara College, West Bengal. Today for two, Daniel before on one occasion while uh, he was giving a, a very sensible introduction of Dr. Anand to us, Daniel before. I will try to explore in future Dr. Anand in the context of Daniel before. Okay, thank you very much for the patient hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. That was a wonderful, wonderful exposition. And I'm sure you could have analyzed each line so much more uh, critically and uh, given us such such wonderful insights. Uh, that was that was a treat. Thank you, uh, our chief guest, Dr. Bashadev Chakraborty. And uh, I now go on to the guest of honor, Dr. Maya Sermon Sekulich. Uh, she will not be able to address us directly, but she has. Uh, we will be sharing a video of her address. Uh, Dr. Maya is an internationally published Serbian-American author of 23 books. Her poetry has been translated into 25 languages. She is a multiple award-winning poet, popular novelist, distinguished essayist, bilingual scholar, major translator. And uh, she was, uh, she has been teaching at most uh, prestigious universities like Princeton, Rutgers, Harvard, Yale, Columbia, and Iowa universities. She was the recipient of two Fulbright Scholar Awards, American University Women and Princeton University Fellowships. In uh, the last couple of years only, she has won 11 prestigious international awards. And not only that, but she in 2018, she was honored as one of the style icons of Serbia in 20th and 21st century among 42 most important women in two centuries. And in 1990, she was included by the Vogue photographer Marco Glaviano among the most beautiful women of the world. So uh, she's a body of the Serbian Association of Writers, a member of the American and Serbian Pen and the Academy of American Poets. And now let us listen to this beautiful scholar and wonderful human being. Uh, we would be sharing her video. Good to hear with you and with so many illustrious names in world culture. I am here to honor the book that my illustrious friend dedicated to the great Italian Nobel laureate Grazia de Leda, of which I as a member of the Italian National Committee of Celebrations since the 150th year of her birth, appointed by the President Dr. 
Renato Ongania, founder of Wikipoesia. I am part of and for which I created the memorial, Grazia de Leda nel Mondo, thanks to tributes and testimonies from very valid world voices. The book of Dr. Journal Point Counterpoint is the result of a mind of the highest level for the content value. It is a philosophical odyssey that founds his poetic faith. The work of a great mind, capable of looking to the future. As far as it can look back in time, riding on the past. The vast canvas of his works flows through history, fantasy, fiction, mythology and even neo-mythology. With a cognitive richness that is appreciated and esteem. Dr. Major Hermann Sekulic, Serbia UK, defines him as one of the greatest poets among philosophers and one of the greatest philosophers among poets. In this new work, Point Counterpoint, he invited scholars from all over the world to interview him on various topics. Personally, I find that the interviews he has included in this book are of high cultural depth, wonderfully exposed, accessible to the knowledge of a great man of letters, such as he is which demonstrates his indissoluble link with literary values, the genetic heritage of a man who looks to life and literature. I am particularly struck and extremely moved by his desire to dedicate this work to Grazia de Leda, our great winner of the Italian Nobel Prize, in our beautiful Sardinia, a hard and hostile land. Then, to women who were deemed suitable for family activities and detached from the literary world, I renew my thanks to Dr. Anand for having dedicated this great philosophical work to the memory of our Nobel Prize winner Grazia de Leda, the only Italian woman to have received it. I greet him and I congratulate him and I thank those who have had the patience to listen to me. Happy Sunday to beloved dear India from my Italy Italy. Maria Teresa Professor, Manta writer and poet. Literary and Radio Critic, Honorary Degree of National and International Awards, Ambassador of Peace and Humanity IFCH, dear. In. Thank you, thank you. That was a wonderful, uh, brilliant ode to Dr. Anand. And uh, it was so lovely listening to those wonderful sentiments from Dr. Actually, uh, hello, hello Mandakini. Uh, there was a goof up. And uh, it was so lovely listening. There was a goof up. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, Randhir, please play. Uh, please play the Dr. Maya Harman. Greetings from Oman, Jordan. Let me first express my own personal feelings regarding the seventh celebrating I sincerely wish I were with you in person. I think this is uh, Dr. Jaffrey's video play. We need to have Dr. Maya. No, no, no. He's a, he's a desire Sartavi. And many more, but above all, a humanist. When I think of Dr. Anand's gifts to humanity, those precious gems, the offspring of his profound mind, generous heart, and beautiful soul, part in this discourse. I have a few more words to say to Dr. Anand personally. Dear friend Jamel, I'd like you to know that for me, you are much more than a friend. You are a comrade, an inspirer, and more significantly, you are a role model. So I want to Wishing you success will be an understatement. You're way above that. Therefore, 
I think I want to pray that your readers and disciples everywhere will always have the joy of partaking in your wisdom and your legacy. May God bless you ever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Uh, that was Dr. Nizar Sartavi from Jordan, uh, who is a poet, translator, columnist, and essayist, and he's a member of the Jordanian Writers Association. He has authored more than 20 books of poetry and poetry translations and has been anthologized in numerous collections and uh, been published in both print and online magazines and newspapers in different parts of the world. He has participated in many literary festivals across Jordan, Palestine, Lebanon, Morocco, Kosovo, and India. It was wonderful listening to Dr. Nizar Sartawi. And uh, who do we have up next, uh, Dr. Anand? Uh, should we have uh, Dr. Maya's video or? Sir, please unmute yourself. Uh, please invite uh, uh, Arindamji. Okay, sir. Okay. So uh, our honored uh, guest. Uh, uh, one moment, please. So uh, our honored guest, uh, Orindam Ji, Orindam Roy is very much here. Uh, he's a, a, a mentor to all of his writers. Uh, he's publisher, editor, author, poet, translator, the teacher of mass comm and creative writing. And Dr. Uh, Prof. Uh, Sri Orindam Roy has 40 years experience in various newsrooms. Festival director of Kavya Kung, a mega, mega international multilingual poetry fest, is also the founder and editor in chief of Different Truths, creating a column for all of us poets and writers to express our views. He was the managing editor of a reputed Gurgaon based citizens journalist portal. He has launched several publications, newspaper supplements, has handheld several journalists, young authors, and poets and has been chief guest, keynote speaker, and delivered presidential addresses. He has contributed 13 chapters to various publications, and some of these have also been published as two coffee table books uh, published by the Times Group. He is co-author of a novel, uh, Reverse Run Back, which was launched at the American Center New Delhi in 2015, and his writing partner is a well-known uh, American novelist, Joyce Yarrow. He lives in Prayagraj, that is newly named or uh, newly named Allahabad and Bangalore. So I kindly um, request uh, Sri Arindam Roy to share his views with us on Dr. Anand's writing. Thank you, Mutakini. Thank you, Jadel. It's wonderful to be here in Uh, voice is not audible, sir. Hello? Sir, you need to be a little louder. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Can, yes, can it's you... better. This is better, sir. Uh, cannot hear you, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, no, sir. We there's still some uh, glitch. I think this this is fine, sir. This is fine. A am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is absolutely okay. fine. Please okay. continue. Possibly, possibly the uh, thing was thing was working. Anyway, good evening, Mandakini. Good evening, Janel Ji, and a lot of friends who are here. I'm not taking them. Most of them, you know, I work with, and almost, I mean, a lot of you have been a part of different groups also, including Janel Ji, Mandakini, and others. Now, uh, before I talk of Janel Ji, a small trivia, since we have the 75th anniversary, or rather we are already celebrating from 13th to 15th, you see? So, so uh, it's, it's very interesting thing to know that world over, you see, India is being celebrated and monuments and hills and various places have been lit up in Trikala. So which is a great thing for us. Somebody says, tiranga. somebody says, you know, Har ghar mein tiranga. whatever it is, the tiranga is something which unifies us. So that is very important. And a, and a little bit of sad thing, like since we are talking of good and evil, uh, the, the trilogy that 
Dr. Janel Singh has talked about. The sad thing is the re recent attack on uh, Salman Rushdie, and I think all of us should, uh, you know, have the harsh word against its peace. Writers should have the freedom to express themselves. Now, let me come to Janel Ji. Uh, there are two books about which I would like to speak over here, particularly. One is, uh, is Point Counterpoint, where uh, some of us have interviewed him. And he had asked me, I, I, I even forgot when, when that happened, uh, until I saw the PDF which you shared with me, uh, that I had asked him 24 questions. I think one of the most questions that perhaps a journalist could have asked, right from his childhood, to you know, his upbringing, various things. And he has very patiently and meticulously answered my questions. Not only my questions, I also went to the various interviews of you know, prominent writers and authors and critics. And he has dealt uh, each question in that entire book with great care and with great concern, which is superb. It shows, you know, He's not only a poet and a thinker, he, he has his feet firmly rooted on this earth. Another interesting thing that comes to my mind when I talk to Janel Ji is that, you know, uh, perhaps because of his uh, background, that he has, has seen hard days and then also better days, but he has not forgotten his past. He's very humble, he's very simple, he's very focused, and there's no air about him, his success has not gone to his head because any, I think most of us with even half the work that he has done would be airheaded, which he isn't, which is commendable, commendable. Uh, I find that Dr. Anand is not only rooted in tradition, when we come to his epics, the three epics that we are talking about, he's two. I have read and the third one is you know in the pipeline. So he is not only rooted in, in tradition, and this tradition here is not only Eastern but also Western. Now, this East-West confluence of thought is uh, interestingly was started in the West also. You know, we had seen W. B. Yeats or T. S. Eliot, you know, talking about the Eastern philosophy in their poems. And here in his epic, uh, we find Dr. Anand, you know, take references, biblical references, and, you know, mix them with the Indian mythology. So it's, it's a, something very unique, something very interesting. I don't think anybody has done any such thing before. So this is absolutely unique, absolutely fresh. Uh, and it's a very interesting uh, crisscross of ideas. Uh, and particularly our generation, uh, you know, we, we, we have come up in, at the crossroads of various cultures. In India, we were lucky to be exposed to multi, multiculturalism that we talk about now. We, we, we picked it up unawares when we were growing up and Dr. Uh, Janel Singh elucidates it beautifully in his works. So this is commendable. One uh, aspect that comes to my mind particularly when you talk about this second book, uh, the, the, the Dominion of the Need Worlds. You see, uh, he talks about the failure of two major institutions, marriage and democracy. Interestingly, a couple of years back, he wrote a very brilliant article on the subject for us in different groups, and it was read and discussed. And, you know, even I had talked to him with great detail. And it's so interesting to find that you know, it's come as full circle and found expression once again in this in his epic. Uh, as a journalist, having covered a lot of elections, I find his two cantos where he talks about you see rigging of elections and how uh, the evil forces actually manage to sort of you know take advantage of it is absolutely rooted in contemporary reality. So. His imagination is again rooted, again, you know, has roots in the terra firma. And what he talks about and what he tells us reminds us of things which most of us have seen and heard and have experienced. His sensibility is very interesting. Uh, a 
poet who is very lyrical at point at some point can also you know transcend to the universal universalism and when we talk of universalism he he transgresses this barriers or these boundaries which we have created between the east and the west you see he he does that so beautifully so seamlessly uh, he just flows like water from one to the other you know in in in, in uh, when we talk about learning of languages and how languages are held you know learned and sort of uh, transmitted so one of the way of doing it is parallel parallel system of the mind where you can move from one language to the other to yet another you know uh, very easily and there's no translation that is happening in the mind which happens with some people who are not trained to do so so which is very interesting which is which dr journal shows again a very superior mind a very superior kind of imagination where he can you know braid existences braid thoughts you know bring east and west bring the very uh, mundane with the universal and the cosmic he, he does that all this so so beautifully whether it be his interviews whether it be his articles whether it be you know his poems including his epics so i particularly find that he he brings to us a very rich experience uh, and I, i hardly can say that there's hardly any indian poet now which we, we don't see anybody who is so respected so accepted not only in india but all over the world you see his his co-authorship with various international authors is you know a, a, a proof of the thing so so and he, look look at the amount of work he has created and uh, i asked him in one of the questions how do you manage he says that he, he constantly thinks and writes and whenever a thought comes he kind of at least puts it down on his phone and perhaps later develops it and and i asked if he uh, ever revisited his works he said that he did and at times there were very minor corrections but he mostly kept uh, the poems to what it was initially so like jawaharlal nehru uh, whose uh, works are at alabad or prayagraj as we call it now you see you can see it at anand bhavan uh, the various manuscripts you know there's not one correction that's something amazing about nehru i can almost guess the almost similarly dr anand is his first draft is almost the last draft which as an academic or even as a journalist we hardly find anybody you know with such command with such surety so this is something you know it, it, it is brilliant it is brilliant otherwise he would not have been able to produce so many work you know and so varied work and i mean by the time we finish possibly uh, reading a book he is ready with another two books so <laughs> you know he amazes us he amazes us so wonderful dr janel ji and congratulations and we look forward to more and more uh, writing from you to enrich us to 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 uh, you know open our minds and hearts and thank you thank you mandakin thank you all of the friends here thank you very much thank, thank you, you so sir much. thank you very much thank you sir thank you arindanda for this uh, succinct very precise uh, very brief uh, excellent analysis and i'm so awed by that <clears throat> comparison you made to nehru and yes uh, the prolific writer that dr anand is uh, i i mean hats off to him yes uh, i mean his manuscripts must be read to be admired so yeah. thank you so much for that comparison thank you arindanda and uh, we have uh, 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 due to a certain technical glitch we earlier played the video of dr maria teresa manta instead of dr maya and uh, to briefly introduce you to dr maria teresa manta whose uh, video we just congratulatory messages we heard now uh, just a while ago before orindamda she's a laurea honoris causa from italy and uh, an appreciated and esteemed teacher she is also a poet literary critic journalistic collaborator vice president of the world council of poets this amazingly talented lady whom you heard just before dr uh, sri arindam roy spoke uh, she is uh, 
also frequently present on the Italian and American channels of California, which is why you could hear her uh, speaking about her uh, radio programs. And uh, so uh, this excellent, uh, talented, multifaceted lady has been awarded with uh, many awards, the Certificate of Ex Excellence International Icon of Literature, and uh, then uh, the Certificate of Excellence with Pride by Mevadev Laurel Award 2018 of India. And she's also been awarded uh, the World Laureate in Literature 2018 by WNWU Several Kazakhstan Awards, Certificate of Poetry Presentation by the Azad Foundation by uh, registered under Dr. Janelle Singh Anand, International Best Female Literary Personality 2020 from Wahid Center for Humanity and Humanitarian Development and many more such awards. So we listen to this excellent scholar dissecting Dr. Anand's works. And now we will have the video of Dr. Amaya Herman Sekulich, the Serbian American author who has sent in her congratulatory message in the form of a video. Uh, Dr. Uh, Randir Gautam, Professor Randir Gautam, if you could kindly play the video. And participants of the big uh, celebration of four books by Dr. Janail Anand. I'm sorry I cannot uh, join you because on this day, the 14th of August, I will be traveling uh, from Dubrovnik to Belgrade uh, by taxis and planes and so on. Uh, so I'm just sending you my warmest regards and uh, want to stress again that what uh, Dr. Jenai did uh, before speak in world literature today to have such vigor and such vision is very unique and he is the national treasure for sure and probably the most important uh, Indian author today as far as I know uh, and I hope that the world will recognize it and it started to recognize it by giving him Franz Kafka award which I think uh, is uh, in the right hands. So once again, my warmest regards. I am participating here in a, a fantastic uh, fast music and more uh, classical music in Mediterranean setting uh, with one composition based on my poem. Um, I wish uh, maybe in the future some of your poems will be also uh, composed and, and performed. Uh, and uh, once again, Jernail Anand, and to all of you, my friends, have a wonderful day and wonderful celebration of the great thinker and great poet, Dr. Jernail Anand. All my love to you. Bye. Um, that was Dr. Maya Herman Sekulich uh, presenting her views. And uh, thank you for sharing uh, your views, Dr. Maya. That was so kind of you. Um, I would request audience members to um, kindly restrain themselves from exchanging private messages. And um, I, we would go on now to if uh, Professor Randir Gautam can play the congratulatory video of Dr. Mas Maksud Jafri. Um, he has spoken on Dr. Ruhaya Farsi's work, comparative work on Dr. Anand's poetry. And uh, Dr. Maksu Jafri is a Pakistani American uh, residing in New York. Can we have his video now, sir? Should I uh, just introduce him a bit before his video? Dr. Maksu Jafri, do we have his video ready? Rundir. So uh, Dr. Maksud Jafri is a PhD in English and DPhil from America and is an internationally recognized poet and philosopher. Uh, by now, his 32 books of poetry, philosophy, religion, and politics in English, Persian, and Urdu have been published. He's a poet, columnist, orator, philosopher, and political activist. So let us listen to his views and his analysis of Dr. Ruhaya Farsi, uh, the Iranian professor. 
and her analysis of Dr. Anand's poetry and its comparison with two Iranian poets. This uh, book that is a comparative study of uh, Dr. Anand and uh, Salam Sepiawe and Khanum uh, Fudul uh, Farazwa. Now, Dr. Rupiya Farsi is an Iranian very scholar of uh, Nishapur University. As she's in Nishapur, so I had just come to, just remembered of her. Uh, Great poet Nazirin Nishapur, and he, one of his couplets uh, is very dear to me. He said that the reason that Safima can over me is Um, so can we play that video later, sir? Maybe we could uh, play it later. Uh, yes, sir. Please yes, go sir. ahead with uh, yes, uh, Dr. Devi Razdan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can uh, go on next uh, to the next person now. And uh, we can have uh, probably his video if it plays later. Then we can listen to him again. So uh, 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 just a second. Uh, this is... Dr. Kulbhushan uh, Rastan uh, is our next honored guest. Uh, Professor Dr. Kulbhushan Rastan was formerly the head department of English as also the Dean Faculty of Arts convener, Board of Studies of University of Jammu. Uh, his areas of specialization include modern and postmodern American fiction, uh, poetry, drama, comparative literature, critical theory, translation and translation theory, 20th century British novel and uh, other such erudite areas. Uh, he's also, uh, uh, Professor Kulbushan Rasna is also uh, an avid uh, radio broadcaster who has delivered numerous radio talks. Besides conducting quiz programs, he has translated many radio plays from Hindi to English, uh, one of which won a national award as the best translated play. He's a life member of the Osmania University Center of International Programs, uh, formerly known as ASRC Hyderabad. And uh, he's also a life member of Melo Melus, that is the multi-ethnic literatures of the world and of the United States, and has presided over numerous paper reading sessions in national and international conferences. Uh, we will uh, hear uh, Professor Kulbhushan Razda now, sir, you're welcome. Good evening to everybody. Uh, so nice to be part of this function. And especially, it has been an experience for me to go through the works of Dr. Janel Singh Anand, prolific dynamic writer. <clears throat> but specifically to uh, uh, talk a little, say about 15 minutes, about the trilogy of Dr. Janel Singh Anand. Uh, three components. One is Lust of the Prince of Darkness. Next, we have the dominion of the netherworld, and then we have the ultronic age. But what has thrilled me is the ultronic age, which is something really uh, I can't forget. Anyway, I must say uh, in totality, when we I consider the whole of this trilogy as a one component, I think Dr. Anand has taken off, especially in the ultronic age, from the stage where the revelation ends in the Bible. 
because as we know the revelation of John is the last chapter of the Bible and where uh, um, St. John is living on the island of Patmos in the Pacific and he gets an angel in a dream who delivers to him God's message over the end of the world. And there he follows certain stages, but the most interesting stages is the, uh, the Armageddon between Christ and Antichrist, where Christ is successful. But here, Armageddon does take place. Angels are beaten and the demons become successful. Uh, and that's in the, uh, in the in Lustus. And later on in uh, this uh, union of the netherworld especially, and God, even God himself, as Dr. Anand very rightly said, and Lustonia is the, I can say, Lustonia is a present day world in which we are living. And I very much wish that our tonic age really becomes a reality. Anyway, I'll begin with one thing. Uh, I must highly congratulate Dr. Janar Singh Anand from uh, connecting or either taking off, maybe knowingly or inadvertently, where the revelation ends, because there it says that the last loosening of Satan will be followed by the generation of human morals and everything, and end of the world by fire. And then God shall get a new heaven and a new earth, like a bride adorned for her husband. This is how the revelation ends. And Dr. G.S. Anand starts from the stage where the revelation ends. The new heaven and the new earth that we get in the Antronic age with Queen Antronia, as a kind of uh, gods, the cosmic rulers, representative to preside over an utopian world where sin doesn't exist where uh, a new Adam and a new Eve, uh, they, they are there. So I just want to be a poet myself and writing poetry mostly. I have the lustrous, the second part of the trilogy, lustrous, the prince of, uh, sorry, the first part of the trilogy, lustrous, the prince of darkness. I just wrote a small ode as a poet. I want to read it out for a couple of minutes. I call it Ode to Lustrous, the president of the world of darkness. Oh, young dynamic prince of darkness. You have proved yourself as the worthy successor. Old Satan, feeling tired, bored, handed over the kingdom of evil for you to perpetuate the mayhem, the orgies of brutality and animalistic lust, the specialized, thy specializations, rapes, murders, cacophonies, unrest, all these thy hobbies. These give you immense pleasure, snarling egos, barking pride, howling lust. All these, thy ornaments, thy adornments. I'm addressing lustres. With these toxins of ape arrogance, I repeat, with these toxins of ape arrogance, because here what comes to my mind is the ape and the sense of uh, the great post catastrophe novel of Aldous Huxley, Ape and the Sense, where there are these lines quoted from major of major, uh, major by major of Shakespeare, major for major. But man, proud man, trust in little brief authority. Most ignorant of what is most assured, his glassy essence like an angry ape, play such fantastic tricks before I have as make the angels weep. Exactly, this is what Dr. Anand is telling us in Lustrous. Look at it. So I'm saying, all these thy ornaments, thy adornments, with these toxins of ape arrogance, you make maroonish humans fight, kill, and quill each other. Exactly what's happening these days. The kaleidoscope, kaleidoscopic cosmos of evil has now become the playing field. And Lastonia were a metropolis with bombings, missile attacks, gas chambers. So this was, what I must say, a kind of a small ode to Lustus and his kingdom of Lastonia. Uh, but then finally, uh, as we know that uh, the trilogy ends with the electronic age. And what I found in the trilogy that the electronic age is marvelous. I, I, when I was reading through that, I was going through the electronic age, I felt I'm living in this kind of utopian world where Queen Altronia is ruling and no kind of evil is at all there. The new Adam and Eve are living in a new replenished Garden of Eden where eating the forbidden fruit is no crime. Oh, Dr. Anand is a fantastic man. The way he has given it because I am a student of demonic apocalypse, which I worked in my doctorate. So again, as I did in the case of Lustus, I have done the case of the electronic age, the climactic uh, book of the trilogy. I say these were the electronic age. 
an age of utopian coincidence, of hopes fulfilled, promises kept, <clears throat> assures in the Satyayu, assures in the Satyayu, the celestial apotheosis, with God Himself, a heaven, haven of divinity. Okay. An age of gods, angels, angelic queens, dream servers, ensuring disease, ignorance, base passions, pestilences, forced marriages become extinct. The demonic past. The past also becomes extinct. The demonic past, what we saw in Lustus, or even the domain of the netherworld. A past of demons, beasts, animals, animals adorned by Satan, and also and graced by with human, with human contours. And some of these devils are in human shape, or they are adorned with human contours. Break havoc. Their weapons, what were their weapons or what are their weapons? Rapes, murders, lust, greed, avarice. Now all gone, wiped out, consigned to the dustbin of oblivion. Satan's deputy and successor, lustus, already banished for a million years. Decaying, decomposing. Can it be? Is it possible for such a reality to be? Why not? Or else, longing for such moments, ostensibly the stuff of fantasy, of dreams, time quakes, taken to earthquakes, the only panacea. I'm saying this as a poet. I was so inspired by reading Ultronic Age. Those to Dr. Arnold, I repeat the line. Ostensibly the stuff of fantasy of dreams. That's what the Ultronic Age is. And I very much wish it to be a reality. Time quakes, taken to earthquakes, the only panacea. The only prescription to freeze moments, to allow yearnings to metamorphose into experience realities. I repeat the line. I repeat the line I have written. <clears throat> to allow yearnings to metamorphose into experience realities. Let my mind be the furnace. Let my mind be the furnace, the melting pot, to weld honeyed moments into a single kaleidoscope of truth. I repeat my line. Let my mind be the furnace, the melting pot, to weld honeyed moments into a single kaleidoscope of truth. And my existential self as the bay, and my existential self as the bay in which these frozen moments, I am reading the ultronic age, may remain anchored like ships to the last breath of my life. And, uh, and these, Evils. Now, Satan's deputy successor, Luster, is already vanished for a million years, decaying and decomposing in the walls, caves, and dungeons of Pluto in Hades, an outcome of his evil acts and profane antics. He has been banished. Now, with Queen Artonia, the titular sovereign, we have a world with a new heaven and a new earth. This is what is how the revelation ends in the Bible. We have a new heaven and a new earth, a replenished garden of Eden, akin to a bride adorned for her husband. The God of Genesis is the supreme celestial entity, I repeat. The same God who looks a tyrannical God earlier, who threw out Adam and Eve out of the garden of Eden when uh, he, was, he was seduced by Satan into the garden of Eden as a serpent. And Adam and Eve, before they come to sin of Lucifer, by living in a state of purity, innocence, and heroism. After committing sin of disobedience, God threw a many out of paradise, and the whole of mankind was damned. And therefore, purity, innocence, heroism were replaced by alienation, contradiction, disorder. This is the main problem with Americans, American heroes, American writings, even now. I repeat, <clears throat> New heaven, a new world, a new heaven, and a new earth, a replenished garden of Eden, akin to a bride adorned for her husband, the God of Genesis, the supreme celestial entity, the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent one, the cosmic consort of Queen Altronia. Yes, that's what the, what the, uh, what the book gives. The place. So God himself is a cosmic consort, consort of Queen Altronia, to whom he entrusts the creation. The perfect governance of a new world, a new heaven, and a new world. So I, I, why I wrote these two poems, one on lustrous, the prince of darkness, one on the electronic age, 
was just to show my uh, regard and my uh, kind of uh, quantum inspiration I got from reading Dr. Anand's books. And there also I found his books, the Revelation, study to read. I wish you all bless him more and more and more with such kinds of writings and his prolific writing, inspirational. Uh, for me, though I am a uh, <laughs> I'm a very experienced guy and a very, very senior professor. But I learn, I find myself as a scholar of doctor. I feel I'm learning anew by reading his works. And uh, so much gave me a chance to present the quintessential aspect of this trilogy. And uh, I find in it a kind of a uh, coalition or a kind of a cementing factor with the Anthology of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That was thank so, you so much. Thank you, sir. That was so kind of you and uh, a wonderful expression of uh, camaraderie as well as a fellow feeling for a great writer like Dr. Anand. Thank you so much, Professor Rasan. Thank you. Thank and you so uh, thank you so much. Uh, we go on now to our next honored guest who will speak briefly about uh, Dr. Anand's accomplishments. Uh, Sri Bhagira Chaudhuri, I kindly invite you. He is an internationally acknowledged poet, writer, philanthropist, uh, philanthropist, social activist, humanist, global activist for responsible parenthood and responsible earth mm -hmm. citizenship, world peace, environment activist. And Sri Bhagira Chaudhuri is based in New Delhi, India. He's the founder of Global Literary Society and uh, the recipient of honorary doctorate in literature, honoris causa from the Institute of European Roma Studies and Research into Crimes Against Humanity and International Law uh, based in Belgrade. He's been awarded Laurel the Poet by Indo Universe Voice of Poetry, International Peace and Human Rights Ambassador Award by uh, Bhutan based organization, Diploma the Honor Award by Congress of Intercontinental Literature and Human Rights of Uruguay in 2020 and also several other awards um, by other uh, countries such as Philippines and Lebanon. I uh, request uh, Sri Bhagira Chaudhuri to briefly uh, uh, express his congratulatory message for Dr. Anand. Sir, you are welcome. Thank you very much, Doctor. Good evening, everybody, and warm greetings from India to everyone around the world and a happy Independence Day. Thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Anand, for inviting me to your uh, uh, book ceremony. I would like to say that Dr. Anand is really doing a great job, and not only a great job, but he is a global thought leader today. He, his writings, speak about and highlight the great humanitarian values around the world. And at the same time, he shows us through his writings, the terrible human condition on the planet today and the dark side of humanity. We know that the first evolution which is started with the advent of the language. When we completed our genetic evolution, humanity was ushered into a new evolution through language and language gave us literature and language seeded the collective consciousness of the humanity. And we created our new evolutionary instrument through cultural evolution. Now, as Dr. Anand highlights the problems of the human condition and the problems prevailing around the planet today and the great moral collapse, Dr. Anand talks about the new evolution and what is that new evolution? That literature must evolve. Literature cannot stay behind and indifferent to the human condition. So literature must evolve and literature must become positive. 
because we have enough negativity all around given to us or supplied to us or rather the media is creating so much negativity and also the other kind of negative writings. So we need more positive humanitarian values highlighted by new positive literature. And Dr. Anand leads that revolution in the human consciousness. And he talks about cosmic consciousness. He talks about what best can be done through his showing us the, the depth and the deep problems in our own nature of the humanity, where we have, like through the lusters, he has shown us the real problems of humanity of our nature. So through positive literature and highlighting the humanitarian values, we can overcome the darker side of the humanity. And we must definitely recognize every writer, every author, every person who is in the, in the writings or the literature must align his consciousness with the positivity. And through that, we can empower the human consciousness, the human neocortex. Neocortex is the new brain of humanity, which separates us from animals. And this new brain, neocortex, it is strengthened and empowered by the altruistic attitudes of human nature. And Mother Nature, through evolution, has made us as a portion of nonviolence because we didn't bring here the horns, horns, or any instrument or the tool of violence in our body. At the same time, when we think altruistic parts, our immune system gets empowered. Now that's a great proof that a human organism is altruistic organism. So we need to empower the human nature and the human brain of neocortex through positivity, through humanitarian values. And we need more humanitarian writers. We need more humanitarian literature today in the, on the global level. And that is the region when I started Global Literary Society, my motto and my ambition is that we promote positive literature around the world. And Dr. Anand is incredible writer. He's so versatile. His writings are really like self transforming. His writings are really like self revelation to everyone. And I propose and I ask everyone to spread the word around about his writings and about his books for the future generations also. And he will be remembered in future as a great evolutionary activist. This is what I believe that Dr. Anand is a evolutionary activist and he is helping humanity to evolve towards the better human beings so that we could evolve from homo sapiens to homo deus. So for me, Dr. Anand and his writings are really like pathfinding or really like a light of beckon of showing the world what is possible and how much we could do with the literature. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Anand. Thank you very much, Ajad Foundation. And thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That thank you, Paul, sir. Thank you very much for your presence and your good ideas. Good thank news. you, sir. Very encouraging. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Chaudhary. And uh, we have uh, for uh, those uh, briefly, but very succinctly and well put views, uh, we enjoyed listening to them. Our next honored guest, and uh, we are uh, advanced well into the evening. So just uh, we will listen to now a few more uh, speakers. Uh, our next honored guest is Professor Lakshmi Sri Banerjee. Uh, she is uh, uh, an established senior poet, writer, uh, Rotarian practicing classical vocalist. Uh, she was a senior Fulbright scholar, Commonwealth scholar, a university professor. She's a recipient of the coveted UGC postdoctoral research award, Government of India. She has also been felicitated by the Sahitya Academy with the Avishkar Award or Honor for her dual expertise as a scholar, musician, and a poet artist. She has been the founder, pro vice chancellor, and ex vice chancellor of Kolhan University, the largest in Charkhand, India. She has lectured, taught, performed, and recited widely, has five published books of poetry, 120 research publications, and she has also had, has had the rare honor of being the Indian president's uh, nominee on boards of central universities. Her uh, areas of expertise are many including women's global writings, Tagore's poetry studies, with her transcreations of Tagore, Oriental mysticism and Sufism, English romantic poetry, a widely read, well-read scholar, and she is also a multiple Paul Harris fellow. Through her poetic, academic, and other writings, as well as her vocal music and poetry recitals and sociocultural activism, she practices the avid promotion of peace, freedom, and goodwill. I welcome Dr. Lakshmi Sri Banerjee, and we would welcome her brief comments on today's uh, book launch, uh, where Dr. Journal, uh, Journal Singh Anand awaits her uh, congratulatory and uh, analytical uh, uh, words on his uh, four books that are being launched today. Thank you so much, ma'am. You're most welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mandakini. Can you hear me? Yes, doctor, we can yeah. hear you. We can hear you, see you clearly, ma'am. Please proceed. Okay. <clears throat> uh, of course, uh, like everybody else, I'm here uh, to congratulate um, uh, Dr. Anand for his uh, uh, superb, stupendous uh, uh, work, both poetic and philosophical uh, creations uh, that have... Uh, uh, perhaps uh, left many of us, not just in India, but across the globe, uh, not just amazed, but absolutely uh, awestruck. And uh, I would like to make some brief comments before I start. Uh, as uh, Aridnamda had said, I'm just repeating it. It is my sacred duty as a writer and as writers, as Dr. Anand says, that uh, none of us want to hear our, uh, hear our poetry, whether our writings in uh, poetic or in any other genre. Uh, but still, I will uh, talk about one very famous statement. And uh, it makes uh, a lot of sense to us, to the poetic fraternity. But when it will make a sense to the uh, world of rulers to the world of power hungry leaders, we do not know. But yes, B.B. Shelley had said that poets are the unacknowledged, of course. That is a very important, that word, unacknowledged legislators of the world. Uh, nevertheless, even if we are unacknowledged, uh, as Dr. Anand feels uh, real angst, so do I. Uh, but still, we are the legislators of the world because if the world listens to us, we may remain unacknowledged. But if at all we, uh, we come to a position where, where, where we are acknowledged, then we continue to be what P.B. Shelley said, 
the legislators of the world, not in the sense of uh, sitting in a parliament of uh, goons. Yes, I will use that word. It doesn't sound very civilized, but then it means legislation in the, in the way of uh, good thought uh, and good practices. And, and, and where there is a bridge between what one thinks and what one uh, practices, the pre preaching and the practice. So that is one part. And as a writer, I feel it my sacred duty to just, you know, castigate uh, the person or the group or whoever has uh, done whatever he or they have done to Salman Rushdie, a very, very honest writer. Uh, for us, all of us, uh, he's exemplary. I'm not talking about uh, Rashdi today, but it is my duty, just like Dr. Anand, li like most of us, we love to be honest. We love to be honest to the world, and we, we even at the cost of uh, being persecuted. Uh, that's, my, that's my take on it, whether it is Taslima Nasreen on this side or Salma Rushdie on this side, or Arundhati Roy on the other side, uh, writers who are honest have been persecuted and we have to be on their side. And I, I, I really castigate this evil act, number one. And number two, I'm very happy that the Tiranga is today flying everywhere. But today it seems it's very easy to call yourself a patriot and a nationalist because you fly the Tiranga and, and you go out of your doors and you look at the divisiveness outside and then you kill someone. And you say, well, I'm a nationalist and I love my country. So where is that freedom? It is still, I think, a, a great hall, a long hall at, at that midnight hour. Have we crossed that midnight? I am sorry to say we have not. And that is why I congratulate Dr. Anand for all that he has done for humanity, for the mighty values of humanity, because that's what we all stand for. I mean, we are not people to be cowed down by persecution, by, uh, by you know, the brutalities that we see every day. And then we say, oh my God, we are such patriots. I'm sorry, that brand of patriotism does not allure me at all. Though it is the eve of Independence Day, I have always had a, a flag on my desk. It was always there. It is still there today. But I have not put an extra flag anywhere to show that I'm a great patriot. Because what is freedom? Do we have it? It is time to introspect. A great time to introspect. And there is the real pivotal point where I congratulate Dr. Anand. I think uh, my take is that when I, uh, I, I also uh, went through Lustus, I gave my views on Lustus. I, and of course, the uh, second book uh, about the netherworld. And finally, uh, this uh, Odyssey into the Ultronic Age. It is a, a, a great Odyssey, a great Odyssey, let us say, but Mahakal trilogy, I would like to focus on this world Mahakal, which has come from our Indian philosophical thought, which actually means eternal endless time and is embodied in Shiva. Now, if we come to Shiva, we do come into the concept of Trinity because he is known as Mahakal and his consort is Mahakali. And that is eternal time a kind of an oxymoron, eternal time, or time into timelessness, or space into endless, uh, in today's world, geospecialities. And there I find Dr. Anand is actually moving horizontally from left to right and right to left. And then again, he's moving from the cosmos vertically from the skies or the Asia to the netherworld and back again, again from utopia to dystopia. And this is the Mahakal cycle, the endless cycle of birth, 
and then we go through all that we go through creation, annihilation, and destruction, and then, of course, rebirth and this hope of regeneration, the hope of being redeemed, which comes in the final uh, Ultronic age. And I also have my take on Queen Ultronia somewhere as I find, like Dr. Anand has done, people have said it here, I'm repeating it, that he has created a great bridge between, the, uh, between Oriental thought and Occidental thought. And this kind of bridge, uh, where he's moving between the East and the West and back again, is also what he's doing between utopia and dystopia and back again to utopia. And this is again the cycle of nature, the cycle of time, the cycle of life, of birth and death, creation and annihilation, and then rebirth or the hope of regeneration. It is, nature renews itself. We remember that famous line from Ode to the West Wind, where Shelley, after the devastation that has been done by this furious West Wind, he says, oh wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? And, and again, I, I, I go back to Shelley, like he had said about poets being the unacknowledged legislators of the world. So we remain legislators, we remain writing, we remain doing our duties. And I wish to congratulate Dr. Anand for his east, west, north, south, horizontal, vertical, all the movements I find are somewhere not modernist. My take on it is ultra post, post-modernist, ultra post, post-modernist thinking. That's my take on it because I have very many reasons, not much time, uh, because everybody has to speak. So uh, this kind of postmodernism, where, where uh, there is a lot of dialectic also. Yes, this is what I wanted. You know, the dichotomies are not left loose. That is, uh, some others have also talked about it. He has interwoven them perfectly. I mean, oh, when he's talking of Lucifer, in uh, you know the biblical connotations are so much fused and so smoothly blended with our our own indian philosophical scriptural texts that uh, there is no loose confusion it is smooth fusion it is not confusion it is fusion and blending of thought of the best of thinking across the globe and i think i've said a lot and uh, I wanted to say more, but I won't. And congratulations, Dr. Anand, to giving, for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts on your writing and on your great uh, dialectics, on your great movements from utopia to dystopia and back again, and our hopes of redemption. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, um, for understanding our constraints of time. And uh, yet, uh, within that very short spell, uh, enlightening us with your views on Dr. Anand's writings. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I would have uh, liked to invite Dr. Swaraj Raj, if he's present here. He was our honored guest. And if he's present, uh, sir, would you kindly acknowledge your presence? Uh, Dr. Anand, I can't see him on the okay, participant. Yes, sir. So I will go on to our pen and limit speaker today, who is Dr. Molly Joseph. Uh, she's a professor, poet from Kerala, who writes travelogues, short stories, and storybooks for children, wonderful stories. She has published 12 books, 10 books of poems, a novel, and uh, has won several accolades, which include India Women Achievers Award 
2020. She believes in the power of the word and writes boldly on matters that deal with the contemporary. And I myself am in love with her story, Merging Terrains, which I got an opportunity to edit for uh, the uh, short story anthology, uh, the uh, mixed fair for which she also won an award. Congratulations, ma'am. I get a chance to congratulate you personally here. And please uh, enlighten us with your brief views on Dr. Anand's writings. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Mandagini. I hope uh, I'm audible enough. Am I? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Totally. Yes. It is great to share this platform with these stalwarts, the esteemed literati, and of course, the one who presides over it, Dr. J. S. Anand. Thank you, first and foremost, for inviting me to share my thoughts on your book. Yes, I was. Uh, reviewing your first book, Lustus. Because prone to the postmodern scenario, analysis, everything, you know, I was trying to find out whether it has parody, pastiche, the techniques, how the unwieldy elements were getting out of your control. And there was that dancing disarray of the disparate, all this. But now, when I look at the Mahagal trilogy second, which I would say, I was reading with interest so meticulously. No idea about the next one that I had some idea from Dr. Razdan how it is going to be in the alternate stage. But let me dwell on my observations in this book. Here I feel I would like to read this book as the quest of a human consciousness. I mean, here I differentiate between consciousness and knowledge. Of course, Dr. Dandel has profound knowledge, Eastern and Western, everything. But the kind of consciousness means the kind of experiential level, emotive level, imaginative levels. How he is going into things historically, philosophically, poetically, to evaluate the humans, the predicament of them in this plane of existence in these fleeting shows of the present that was uh, wafting across to us on the past and floating over to the future. As it is very clearly put in the dominion of the Netherlands, let me quote, life is a struggle against oneself to draw a meaning out of our own confused existence. Yes, that is the crux of it. This is no easy task. When Contemporary culture is something that is like a car careening out of control. There should be a sane voice raised to put a brake, to arrest the flow of deterioration. Dr. Anand has taken up this challenge by developing a mode of discourse so innovative, a mode of discourse something that amounts to plain speaking, you call a spade a spade, no rhetorical flourish. And the flow continues as it started from lustres with the spectrum of reality reflected through different eyes, be it of God, Satan, lustres, his son, Mayan, Lestonia, whomsoever, Lancer, whatsoever. By throwing into focus the progressive Dancing disarray of the post-COVID times, yes, that's what I want to highlight. The new normal times, when it raises at the immediacy, we come closer to it. See, here is the human, you know, the kind of human that Noah Gal uh, Harari said, the sapien who emerged from the African forest, later acquiring mastery, becoming the Anthropocene. And as uh, Razdan, Dr. Razdan put it, the Homer Deus, the latest book by him. Here is a person who is uh, confronting a new crisis, the new normal. He is losing his ways in the influx of technology. I mean, the kind of artificial intelligence, the kind of what do you call new kind of biotechnology. Competitive forces are at work. And with your permission, 
then I'll yeah, I would pick up a few lines. That strike me as something so immediate. See, where you say, you know, there is a kind of analogy made with regard to vigilance. But there comes the cryptic comment on your part. See, in wasteland, you could at least hear the thunder. Now you have faked the thunder. And what the thunder says is what you want. No wonder. That is it. With the clever manipulation of the media, with the clever manipulation of what you call the kind of new kind of uh, things at work, be it through AI, artificial intelligence, be it through many other means, new kinds of virtual presenting, whatever, augmented reality, whatever. Man becomes a helpless element. That is my point, because I would quote from you again. I am reading it in the background all the time. I was reading your book. I was going through all those uh, recent, uh, I mean, kind of uh, things that Nova was suggesting, the think tank of the times. And I equate you with that, uh, with that kind of a genius. Because you are exploring it in a very, I mean, covered way. I don't like to read the book as a mere tussle between good and bad, God and Satan. No, it's something more than that. Look, there you say, every aspect of the contemporaneity is brought to us in such a clever way. And you say, all important decisions to be taken, manipulated. You are just, you know, the kind of a mass that has turned into an ass, as you put it, Janelji. The collective humans have turned into a common mass because that is their agenda. Deny them of their thinking. Deny them of their individuality. That is agenda at work. And I would say even God sometimes, when he's talking with cosmos, I even put the problematics of even God there. That's why I said, I don't find anything like good, evil. This book goes above that. Where God is telling cosmos, what is wrong with Adam? Because he simply didn't accept it. He had curiosity of knowledge. They are all quotes from the text. So what I find is, I pick up these loose points. And I find this book approximating the kind of reality that we are going to confront soon with influx of the new wave kind of growth through technology, whatever. We are going to grow faces. We'll be hijacked. Human beings will be hijacked species. And uh, the software that is being hijacked is going to use you as a nut because they have their own artificial mechanisms with which cars work. They have their what zone in which they can have doctors with us and outside forces deciding. So where are we heading to? These questions, these resonances I got in the book, which made the reading so thrilling, Daniel I have to thank you. I mean, I messaged you. You know, what is man today? Finally, you're asking. A rattled, bored, eaten up, fair bellied, thinkless kind of flesh. That is it. We have been hijacked. We have been hacked. And then I would say Anand's writing is never a howl in the fire. Maybe in the ultronic age, when you are coming to that, you find there is a kind of a solution working out of man's same emotional, as I said, the consciousness of man, again redeeming the world. Maybe that is what you are visualizing next. I'm not stealing much of time, but I have to congratulate you, Jernal Ji, for thinking ahead of the times. Such thinkers we need. Sometimes you poke questions and poke our imagination. Sometimes he's sending questions and asking me to answer. You are a kind of consciousness that inspires and instills and energizes the environment expression. So that is the credit I would owe to this great mastermind, Jana Because it is easy to 
write and have rhetorical flourishes on big, big dreams and fancies and all that that they see. Thank but you, live in a contemporary world, we are hitting against reality. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So thank you for I am not exceeding. I don't know whether I exceeded. I got excited. But thank you so much. And I wish you all the best, NLG, in this great travail towards reaching Thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Molly Joseph. So nice of you. Thank you, you ma'am. And uh, uh, we would may I uh, may I just uh, one interception with a lot of humility. Uh, I have written nine books of poetry. Uh, you were reading an outdated bio data. And my 10th, 11th, and 12th are already in the pipeline. And uh, some of the awards which you did not mention doesn't matter. But the books that you mentioned, that five, no. I have written nine books of poetry, and there are three more coming up. So that's an outdated bio data. That's why I sent you an updated one which you did not use. I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't matter, actually. But it's not five. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Um, I would now have our last speaker, who is uh, our honored guest, Dr. Jupaka Madhavi. Uh, she's an Indian expert on women's uh, safety and empowerment with 18 years of progressive work. And she has had legendary work experience in the domain of women's safety, security, and empowerment as a senior national consultant with the Ministry of Women and Child Development, Government of India. And uh, this work has resulted actually in the Honorable Supreme Court of India order dated uh, 2018 for setting up one-stop centers in each uh, district. Major innovations of Dr. Jopaka include the disbursement of over 50 social protection schemes of Government of India to the beneficiaries through the Mahila Shakti Kendra and uh, one-stop center functionaries. Her work has redressed over 6.4 million women affected with violence from over 700 one-stop centers. Dr. Madhavi has also represented India at the United Nations at 62 Commission on the Status of Women, um, New York, USA in 2018. She has also led to the inputs of collating gender disaggregated data with university collaborations by publication of two gender atlases. Uh, during her free time, she undertakes charitable activities for human rights awareness for International Human Rights Observatory, an international charitable foundation for which she is a chairperson and is bridging technological gaps for holding an IPR for monetization of cultural heritage in India. I welcome Dr. Madhavi, who has also edited uh, one of the texts of Dr. Anand and uh, request her to briefly share with us her views before we end the session by a few audience reactions. Thank you so much, Dr. Madhavi, and you're welcome. Thank you. First of all, many greetings and uh, felicitations for the Independence Day for us on 15th August. And today we are celebrating not only India's independence, but also the literature heritage of, uh, of our country through Dr. Janel Singh Anand's works. And more than that, the erudite uh, scholars here present in this uh, August forum, representing uh, their views about uh, literature, not only in terms of Dr. Janelle's work, but also more deeper into the humanistic values, as uh, very well spoken by Bhagdad Chaudhary ji, and definitely the most empowered women out here, starting from none other than uh, the, uh, the chief host, uh, Dr. Professor Mandakini ji. And we do have uh, Professor Dr. Lakshmi Shri, but uh, Banerjee Ma'am, and uh, Dr. Molly Joseph. So basically, I would just like to touch base just to three points. First, I would like to speak from where this all is coming from. I, I would like to talk again back to the soil, the soil of our country, that is Punjab, from where Dr. Janel Anand emerges. And I want to just highlight two words about him, which I've written in the foreword, that I would like to uh, additionally introduce uh, Dr. Ranan that he hails from the land of fine rivers and immortal love stories. There is something in the soil of Punjab that breeds love. One has to be there to taste, touch, breathe, feel and see for it oneself. Or if it is not possible, then one may simply read the works of Dr. Janel, who hails from the Longowal village of Punjab. Dr. Janel's work are soaked in the spirit of Punjab with a tint of saintliness and godliness inking into a literature with a golden hue. So 
taking from here, I would like to say that, as we all know, in English literature, we only hear about Romeo and Juliet. But what about those immortal love stories which have not been penned down or not taken up forward? So this is an introspection, whether it's Heer Ranja, Mirza, Shahiman, Saisi Panu, Soni Mahiwal, Shireen Parhat, Varisha, Bakhtaris, Sona Jaini, uh, Saifal Madhu, Momal Ranu, Balu Mahia, Kima Malki. Now these are the immortal stories which come from Punjab. And why I would like to emphasize on this is as uh, Albert Einstein had said, that the greatest force in this world today is not the atomic power, but the power of love. And it is here, when I talk about the promotion of literature and heritage, or the works of Dr. Janelle Singh Anand, is all about which comes from the love of humanity. The love of creation, as uh, Professor Dr. Lakshmi Shri has very clearly said, that the hope of regeneration of Mother Nature. It is the love of life which the poets or the, the heritage which we carry, we portray through our pen. We fight the darkness through light, to our works. And so is Dr. Janelle Singh Anand with his over 145 works has actually emitted the concept of love, which nobody speaks about, but one do has to through our works, through our pen, as you usually do. And taking it from here, I want to just, uh, just point out three things from uh, the International Human Rights Observatory, which is a platform and is very much vehemently trying to promote the literature heritage uh, not only of our country, but also internationally as a weapon, I would call it, against the violence because I've been addressing violence against women and, and through my experience, I've realized that the only antidote or the solution for violence is the power of the pen, the power of the words, which, which the poets like you have to take it forward as Dr. Lakshmi Shri has said, that you are the legislators. And with my platform, I take the honor and the inspiration from here to take it to the next steps. As Dr. Anand said that we do have the concept of the divinity line and the dignity line as indicators of human rights into the United Nations to ca actually categorize countries which fall above the divinity line who are not breeding violence, but who are breeding love, who are breeding peace as the countries which promote the literature heritage or the poets to actually become not only a kind of, I would say from here, taking it as a compulsory reservation in the parliament to have the literature heritage poets so that you can advocate through your words, through your pen, peace and love, which is actually needed in today's world. So these are the, uh, from taking it from here, there are three things I would like to uh, elucidate that the International Human Rights Observatory, being one of the last speaker, would take from here the takeaways is to translate the honorable works of not only Dr. General Anand's into various languages, but also of the women literature poets, because we also would you know, like to promote women empowerment of the women literary poets. And uh, I think uh, Professor Rasan would agree, who's from Kashmir, that in India, we have in the 14th century, Laleshwari, who had actually taken up the mystic poetism in form of women empowerment or the work of uh, the Honorable Nobel Laureate uh, from Italy, uh, Grazia Dereda, uh, whose work which point counterpoint Dr. Janel Singh Anand has said, and I have again raised this point of how he has taken up women empowerment to celebrate and kind of bring out the new genre of uh, autobiography written in a philosoph uh, philosophical Odyssey manner. So this is one of the things that yes, we would like to promote women, uh, I would say literature, uh, I would say the poets or the literary artists or the philosophers or humanists because they would know their emotions better, which is so frontier, irrespective of the boundaries of the language, to bring in peace and love, which, that, which is something which we need in the world today, which is marred by violence and marred by the poison of society. So this is an antidote, this is a solution and we would take up to create a compendium of all the works of the women literary, uh, I would say artists or the humanitarians or the poets to bring into the world to showcase and definitely in different languages that we do have uh, emotions and words and the power of love, which is much more stronger than violence. And we need to address that through the literature heritage. 
and monetize it and capitalize it and advocate it through platforms like human rights at the international level where people only talk about war but not about love and peace or the emotions which the women and children carry so coming from here i would like to say that yes i would uh, also take this opportunity to say that we would work together as a team from here to create a compendium of short stories dr molly joseph would appreciate for the children from different cultures and new frontiers like africa southeast asia japan serbia where people have not talked about translating their stories to the new generation which inspired which is inspired by legendary heroic human values like dr janil singh anand has always brought in to his mythological characters new mythological characters for the new generation to look into a mythology with the contemporaneous and a pragmatic view so taking it from here i would just like to succinctly put it again that we would take up a more pragmatic approach of bringing out the words the thoughts and feel into the pragmatic society making ultronia a reality but not a, a book but a very happening translating reality which i keep telling dr janel anand ji that which is not very far with our means of science and technology and i'm sure that with warriors like you i would not even call you poets with warriors like you we would like to really create a message that it is not war but it is words it is emotions it is peace which should speak in the parliaments which should not breed war but only talk about love and definitely and, that is the most powerful energy in the world much more than the atomic weapons and that's what we need and taking it from here i once again congratulate dr janel anand ji for creating this forum an opportunity of energizing the universe with this you know flow of thought as dr molly says consciousness into environmentalism and absorb it and take it forward and even dr bhagirat choudhary ji who is working to promote literature through societies so well he talked about bringing in humanitarianism to literature you want to take your philosophy forward dr bhagirat ji and also other uh, you know literary critics which we have dr basudev ji chakravarty ji and the professor rast rastan ji thank you ma'am thank you for that app summing up ma'am thank you so much uh thank you so much for for this varied uh, uh this this spectrum of comments that you uh that you interpreted in the light of uh, yes your feminist achievements and your feminist interpretation that was very necessary uh in this evening uh thank you dr madhavi and uh, i would uh, welcome very brief uh, audience comments from uh, i can see uh, tariq mohammad ji is present uh Uh, Raj Babu Gandam ji is present, and uh, Ma'am Harinder Chima, Ma'am, uh, could you please, uh, the three of you, uh, briefly give uh, audience-related uh, comments as you have expressed, and uh, then we can sort of wind up this evening because it is getting very late. Uh, Tariq Mohammad ji, can we have you first? Sir, unmute yourself. unmute yes he's unmuted um can i be seen on the screen and heard yes sir yes sir we can see and hear you um dr jarnail singh anand i want to thank you for inviting me i am the only non scholar in this group and today i am going to give a little non scholarly comment i have a book in my hand which i want to introduce everybody knows about what is been been written right now the trilogy but this book is of dr anand it is so unique that in this book dr anand is not one person he is more than a score of people he has he's he has the mentality the power to trans uh to write what the other person is thinking though there are some of uh, one of my poems are a stories are yeah it is a story which he has written from other people's minds and that credit i have not i cannot give to anyone 
I was one of those, I don't know who has written, who has read the satanic verses. But I, when, when I was in India, I live in America now, but when I was in India, I was able to sneak in that book in India and I read that book. Though I condemn what happened to him, but I'll keep the book's views to myself. Yes, as poets, we are the voices of, who, of those whose voices have been silenced. And that's how the famous Indian um, Bollywood lyricist Javed Akhtar says, what you cannot say, write. So sometimes we poets cannot say, but our pen dances. And that's what a brief conversation I had with Dr. Saab yesterday. And he said that he has to write because it, it is, it's there, it's always in his mind which goes on. So these books, which I had told him sometime back that one day all his books are, is go, are, are going to be in some of the best libraries and institutions in India and abroad. That's my brief take and that's all. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, Raj Babu Gandam ji, uh, could you please uh, elaborate on a little bit on his works? I think he's not present, uh, Raj Babu Gandam ji. I think he is. I did not see him. Yes. Uh, no, he was present, sir, earlier, but I think he's not here right now. Can we request... Uh, Ma'am Harinder Chima, uh, till then, to kindly briefly comment on uh, Dr. Anand's achievements. Um, a very good evening to a very distinguished gathering. Uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Audible okay. and visible. All right. So, a very good evening to all the Eurotide scholars all across the world. Uh, my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Anand for such an opportunity. Uh, I think when I talk about Dr. Anand, I talk with great reverence as this living legend deserves much more than just respect. When you're talking about a person here who has dedicated and committed his life to literature and promotion of positive literature, and we are not only discussing the volume of his work, we are also discussing the value of his work. As his poetry, his writings reflect the modern day concerns, whether it is moral depravity or environmental degradation or technology overuse and abuse, you find it all there. And of course, Dr. Anand just mentioned that we poets are powerless. We are not as strong as the politicians are. And I very much agree there. But I also thank God for that. That in a very selfish world, there are a few selfless souls who are creating a different world, who are able to influence people, change people, and creating higher mortals. Higher mortals, I use the phrase for all the poets, the thinkers, the philosophers, and Dr. Anand is all rolled into one. Yes, good efforts do take time and he is doing good. The high mortals, in fact, which he is a great example of, are creating a positive world of positive literature and are striving hard to and having the courage to talk good at a time when evil reigns. So I think his work is commendable in that direction. And whatever he's doing, he's not only doing it for the present generation, he's also doing it for posterity. That is the reason we remember great poets like William Wordsworth, S.T. Coleridge, when they talk about nature. We remember John Keats when he talks about the permanence of art and the transience of life. And 
this is the kind of contribution that even Dr. Anand is making to the world literature today. We are not only celebrating his three books, we are celebrating all his writings, all his books that he, have, he has written hitherto, and we are also celebrating his books which are yet to come because I'm sure he is unstoppable and he's going to go on and on. My, my salute to this great soul for his great work, who is who has the unseen power of influencing people, inspire people, inspiring people. And I'm one of them, I'm greatly inspired by him. And sir, you are really a great, not only a great poet, not only a great thinker or philosopher, you're a great soul, soul on this earth and you're making a great change. So thank you so much with that. I just sign off. Happy Independence Day to all of you. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind words. Thank you, sir. Always welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Chima, uh, that was uh, uh, an extremely patient audience who has kept up with us all through this evening. And uh, uh, we need to take a bit goodbye now to all of you so that you can all enjoy the holiday today. I, of course, have no holiday. I will be working tomorrow also. So uh, our vote of thanks would be delivered by Professor Randir Gautam, who has done a brilliant job handling the technical aspect today. Uh, Professor Gautam is a social scientist who is heading the Society for Communal Harmony and convener of the Vishwanidan Society. He's also a social activist with great love for the country. As head of sociology department at Raffles University, he has organized hundreds of webinars on pressing issues the human society faces today. So we would love to hear the vote of thanks from this person who has uh, such humanitarian concerns on his mind. Uh, Professor Gotham, please deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you, Mandakni ji. And I'm facing a severe problem of internet. I know, so, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you're audible, sir. You're audible. Yes, yes. So uh, I really congratulate for the uh, success of this program. Tomorrow is Independence Day, and tomorrow is also 150 birth anniversary of Hindu. And Arvindo considered him a poet not a philosopher. And you know why? Because poet has no boundary to tell and explain the reality. And that is the beauty of Dr. Anand. Dr. Anand sadhana is very appreciable. You know, he, you know, we, we uphold some of the very insightful values by which our society lives and grows. And all of his writing has some of the deep, insightful perspective to explain something very deeply. And But, you know, in India, we have a problem of ignorance. We have received people after a long time. You know, we don't appreciate people on time. We appreciate people after five, you know, decades sometimes, hundred decades. So why? You know, but the kind of work Dr. Anand is doing is really remarkable. You know, people consider him postmodernist, modernist, but I consider him a new pragmatic thinker who has deep, deep engagement, with, not only with the reality, but also the future of reality. So on of Ajad Foundation, I would really welcome all of you to be the part of this journey. And uh, we expect much more contributions from Dr. Anand. I really appreciate and endorse the words of Dr. Vasudev Chakravarti, Dr. Maja Harman Sekoli, honorable guest, Maria Teresa, all the speakers, Dr. K. V. Razdan, 
श्री अरिंदम रॉय रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर लक्ष्मी बनर्जी ऑनरेबल गेस्ट भागीरथ जी एंड व्हाट अ ब्यूटीफुल यू नो इंसाइटफुल डेलीब्रेशन बाय डॉक्टर मॉली जोसेफ एंड आई रियली अप्रिसिएट एंड इंडोर्स द वर्ड्स ऑफ डॉक्टर अद्वी एंड लास्ट बट नॉट लीस्ट ऑल आवर फ्रेंड्स लाइक अरविंद चीमा जी by uh, indrajit ji also but we have limitation of time we did not invite and uh, tarif bhai who joined from usa and uh, not the least our guest uh, host who really uh, you know very beautiful you know explain all the details thank you so much and we expect some more contribution all of us to endorse the idea which dr anand advocates that is uh, and love is a very revolutionary thing that can change and transform the world so thank you so much madam sir for giving a gift of thank you so much so uh, mandakini uh, before you say goodbye to all of us let me say one or two words uh, dear friends uh, i am really thankful to you once again for sitting so long and uh, talking about my books and uh, your words have given courage to my convictions for which i am really thankful to you and you can uh, depend on it as harinder chima has said it will continue <laughs> i have no intention to stop right <laughs> so <laughs> it will continue and it will cross 200 very soon okay <laughs> thank you very much and i must thank uh, randhir gautam because he is not uh, in delhi where he lives he is in some other place far off place but he has managed to be with us and manage this show Absolutely. that shows his commitment Absolutely. and determination to be of uh, you know meaningfully useful to society to literature for which i profusely thank him on behalf of all of us otherwise we would not be sitting here together and uh, uh, professor mandakini bhattacharya your work no need no need <laughs> And, it is uh, absolutely a pleasure and uh, i was rather surprised when you talked so in such a detail about uh, that uh, dr ra farsi's work actually uh, she had a class at this time in iran right otherwise she might have come yes. and she was very sorry mm. about uh, time clash of time mm. but you uh, you filled the gap and uh, <laughs> <laughs> she could have talked as much i think anyway thank you very much and uh, tarik ji uh, indra ji saying so many people so yes. many friends are here yes, uh, dr basudev dr rajdan sir everyone uh, rindam ji choudhary sir and all our friends jafri sir maya harman dr maya harman i am thankful to all of you because in my whatever i am whatever i have been writing you have your role somewhere if you try you can find out. thank you very much mandakini please thank you <laughs> thank you sir uh, good evening and uh, happy independence day in advance to everyone i'm sure you are all late for your dinners and uh, uh, please proceed thank and thank you. you and please be with us again on a future occasion thank, thank you so thank much you. thank you so much good night everyone good night